in this example, we've got a pendulum here that's going to be swinging. And the input variable x is going to be time in seconds, right? So we've got our stopwatch. Okay. We're going to start that stopwatch, and at zero seconds, uh, the angle is zero degrees. Then at one second, um, so one second has passed, that pendulum has swung up to here, 42 degrees. Okay, 42. And then after two seconds, so another second, it's actually just swung a tiny bit more, so it's slowing down, 45 degrees. Okay, then after three seconds, uh, it's apparently swung back, back to here, so back to here, and now that's only seven degrees. After four seconds, it's swung all the way back over here, uh, a negative 38 degrees. After five seconds, it continues to swing all the way up here at a negative 48. Degrees. And after six seconds, it's back to here, negative 14 degrees. So if x is the time in seconds and f of x is that swing angle. Okay, in this example, we've got a hose uh, wheel. We're going to be reeling in this hose. Currently, it's extended out to 50 feet. And here's the lever, we're gonna be pulling this and this hose is gonna wrap around and get pulled in. So at zero degrees, um, we're measuring the angle of rotation, uh, the hose is 50 feet. Now we're gonna take that and we're gonna twist it one time all the way around. So that's a 360 degree turn. And after that, it takes uh, four feet off the hose. So now instead of 50, it's actually 46 feet, okay? Now, there's, the hose is in there now, and, and actually doing it one more time actually pulls a little bit more hose than before, because it's got to wrap around not only the center thing, but around the little hose, you know, the circle that it's wrapping around is bigger. So, uh, after another full turn, 720, it pulls a little bit more, 41.5 feet now. So, it actually pulled off, uh, it took off four and a half feet, getting down to 41 point five feet okay uh, again uh, 1080 now we're gonna rotate it one more full time but again more because it's a bigger circle to wrap around now it's down to 36.5 so now it took off five feet and 1440 is another 360 degree turn and now it's down to 31 you know, we keep getting chopped down. And another final turn, 1,800 degree turn. And we're down to 25 feet. So we've got kind of an increasing amount of pull-in. Uh, and there's the data. So if x is the amount of degrees of rotation and f of x is the length of the hose sticking out. Okay, in this, we've got this new kind of cooking technique where we're gonna be um, turning the heat on and then off on and then off, on and then off, to get this kind of uh, periodic, kind of oscillating temperature going on in this frying pan. We're gonna be cooking, you know, something in there. And we're gonna try out this new technique where we're not gonna leave it on. And we're actually gonna do that every 30 seconds, on, off. So right here, we've got this, the, the, the skillet is heated up at, at zero seconds, right? It's 150 degrees, and we just turned this on. So now after 10 seconds, it's heated up even more, right? And now it's 175, so it's hotter. After 20 seconds, it's still on, uh, 177.28. And after 30 seconds, still going up. Uh, oh. Excuse me, sorry. After 30 seconds, it's now it's going down, 154.23. So it looks like it got turned off maybe somewhere around the 22nd mark, right? Now it's decreasing. Uh, after 40 seconds, still going down. Apparently it's still off. Uh, after 50 seconds, it's apparently still off, 121.23. But then apparently right around 50 seconds, you turn it back on, 
And after 60 seconds, now it's back up to 141.62. So again, it's this turning on and off, and that's how the temperature changes over this number of seconds. So X is the time, and F of X is the temperature of the skillet. Okay, in this circumstance, we've got a, a circular track here with a mouse on it, and the mouse is gonna be running at a constant speed around this track. Uh, we've got a wall in the back, a white wall, that's 12 feet long. So this is like zero feet into the wall, and this is 12 feet into the wall. And we've got this big, huge light, like stadium lights, shining on the mouse, and it's creating a shadow on that wall, okay? And what we're gonna be doing is, as the mouse travels around this track, we're gonna be keeping track of where is that shadow on the wall, right? So as he goes around, the shadow is gonna move Something like that. Okay, we're going to be keeping track of its position along that wall. So um, at zero seconds, we start the stopwatch, we shoot the gun, the mouse starts to go. Uh, that shadow is at the six foot mark. Okay. After one second, though, the mouse has traveled, you know, somewhere over here. And now we're saying that that shadow is at about the 1.79 mark. After two seconds, the mouse, you know, is maybe somewhere down here. Um, and now the shadow's at the 1.45, so maybe it's moved over a little bit. Uh, at the three second mark, the shadow is back. The mouse must be over here somewhere. So now it's 5.29. At the four second, now the mark is 9.78. So he's over here, the mouse must be here, uh, 9.78, at the 5 second mark, 10.79, so the mouse is maybe somewhere here, and finally at the 6 second mark, we're at 7.4, so we're getting back here, the mouse must be here, and finally at the 7, foot, seven second, uh, uh, the mouse is at 2.72 again, so now the mouse has come back over here. Um, and that's that, that's the idea. So X is time in seconds, and F of X is the location of that shadow along the wall. All right, in this case, we've got a polar bear, and we're gonna track his weight over time for a whole year, over 12 months. So at zero months in August, 800 pounds. Two months later, September, October, uh, you're losing weight, 712.5. Um, two more months, November, December, way down, 537.5. You know, you get toward the winter there. Two more months, January, February, uh, down to its lowest, dead of winter there, 450 pounds. So the, this polar bear has really, you know, shrunk down a lot dead of winter, maybe in hibernation. Then two more months, uh, March, April, um, now we're back up. We're out of our hibernation, we're starting to feed again. Two more months, May, June, and we're back up to 712, getting up to our, uh, you know, back filling out most of our weight again, getting into the summer months, and then July and back to August, back up to our normal 800. So again, X is time in months, and F of X is the weight of the polar bear. Okay, in this example, we've got some, you know, a growth pattern here. Uh, maybe there's cells, you know, growing in a dish, whatever it is, it's an abstract idea. Uh, on day one, here is the setup. This is how many cells there are. Okay, on day two, we've got this setup. Okay, this is how many cells there are, and I'm gonna let you count them. On day three, um, we've got this many, so they're obviously growing. Uh, and on day four, we've got this many. Um, so I'll let you fill it in. We got day one, two, three, and four. X is the is time in days, and F of X is the number of cells or the number of dots that are uh, visible that day. Okay, in this example, we have an alien planet with an alien moon that takes exactly two pi hours to rotate around the planet. Imagine that. 
Okay, and we're gonna measure X in time in Earth hours, right? And it takes two pi Earth hours to get around. Okay, so the moon, as we know, is one of the main things that governs how high the tide is, okay? And so on this particular day, we start the, we start the stopwatch or start the timer, and right at the beginning, the tide level is zero feet, okay? Then, after one hour, right, and so the moon on this alien planet's here, it's not pressing down as much, now the tide has risen to 2.02 feet. After one more hour, two hours now, uh, the tide is up to 2.18 feet, okay? After three hours, we'll skip the rest of the animation and I'll give you the data. It's starting to wane again, 0.34 feet. Uh, after four hours, it's negative. Ellen and Dick Moore, please come to the main office. Ellen and Dick Moore, come to the office. You could hear that, Alan, go to the office. Negative 1.82 feet, so now it's actually, it, it, the tide was kind of creeping up on this poor, this poor umbrella here, but now it started to recede, and now the tide is actually going back. It's below what it was to begin with. After five hours, it's at negative 2.3, so now it's receded even more back into the alien ocean. And at six, it's at negative 0.3. Six, seven, so it's starting to come back to normal. Okay. So X is time in hours, right? As this moon circles around, uh, it takes exactly two pi hours to complete the cycle. And here's some data. Uh, F of X is the height of the tide. Okay. In this case, we got a skateboarder on a half pipe. Okay. The base of the half pipe is two feet off the ground and he's gonna be going up, back and forth. And what we're gonna be measuring is his height off the ground. So when we start this stopwatch, okay, um, at, he's already right here at seven feet. So at zero, he's seven feet and he's going up. So at one second, right, one second later, he's now at 11.21, because he's launched off the ramp, he's up here and the highest he's gonna go is 12. So this is 11.21, now he's, oops, two, one. So now he's up here, you know, getting some air. After two seconds, he's at 11.55, so we must have caught him, he's just a little higher now. At three seconds, he's down back at 7.71 feet, so he's on his way back down where he was. At four seconds, he's at 3.22 feet, so now he's down here. Remember, this is two, he's almost at the bottom. At five seconds, he is at 2.21, so maybe he's coming up the other side now. Six seconds, he's at 5.6, so he's coming up here. And at seven seconds, he's at 10.28, shooting up the other side, getting air on the other side. So X is the time in seconds, and F of X is the skateboarder's height off the ground. And here's the data.